All right, you guys, welcome back to the farm, to the farmhouse. Uh, I just got over here and I saw a big bear uh, behind the farmhouse when I pulled up. And I also looked out the window and I see something in my traps. So I think it is what I've been trying to catch. So let's see if I finally caught it. It's right in there. And I wonder if that bear I was trying to get that little guy. Let's go check it out. Well, well, well. Who do we have here? Mm-hmm. Been trying to catch you for quite a while, mister. I've been trying to reach you concerning your car's extended warranty. What do you have to say for yourself? You and your family have built Massive tunnels underneath our farmhouse. You've got to go, Bubba. All right, you guys, so I have dealt with um, the groundhog that was in the trap. Uh, I think there are probably like four or five more uh, that are in this group. There's another big one and then some babies. So I am, I'm not relocating them to a totally different zone or whatever you want to call it. I'm just putting them on the other side of our property, which is far enough away from the farmhouse that I have high hopes that they'll find another place to home over there. It looks like I'm going to have to do it one by one, so at least I've caught one of the parents. Like, I don't know if it's two moms or a mom and a dad, but they're big and they're really uh, causing some problems here because obviously we don't want groundhogs underneath the farmhouse could really mess up the foundation and a lot of other stuff so yeah dealt with that um and then I went up and checked on some of my food plots and they're looking okay they're looking okay the one behind my workshop is definitely the best one it's gotten the most watering so far um I think yeah yesterday we did finally get a little rainstorm so it helped but my other two food plots that are much bigger are not even sprouting yet and I'm afraid that the birds have pretty much picked most of the seeds so I'm not giving up though. I'm I, Like I said, I've got this uh, watering tank system that I finally figured out and uh, it's just a lot of work. I need to get a sprinkler and then I can have this thing running for like 45 minutes, fill it back up and repeat until I get my plots watered enough to sprout and hopefully we'll get some natural rain coming soon too so anyways just a couple updates but i'm really excited i'm about to try something for the first time um okay let me explain i'm on the four-wheeler i got my fishing rod and just a few little lures that i'm gonna go wing it down at the pond um oh shoot i forgot i need to get my pole saw because the pond is so overgrown right now, I can't even get to the dock, much less like a spot to fish from the edge of the bank, so I'm going to have to do a lot of cutting before I can even wet a line, um, and I did see that massive, a massive copperhead down there, um, maybe like a month ago, I don't know, I haven't really been down there since, but, um, yeah, I'm hoping that I'm going to catch a crappy, and then I'm going to cook it up for dinner. So I've, I've eaten crappy before. It's absolutely delicious, but I've never eaten a fish from our farm, from the farm pond before. So, um, I'm really excited. I hope it works out. Let me grab that pole saw and I'll tune in with you guys down at the pond. Diggy the dog. <laughs>
I got a nice little hole there. Um, the dock that I used to fish on is all the way in all that stuff right there, that really thick stuff behind that. So we're just going to leave that for now. And I'm going to fish this beautiful little hole right here. I may have just scared off all the fish with all that, but on the bright side, at least I probably scared off the snakes too. So, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but I think something like this might be a pretty good little bet. It's like a micro jig. I can't even show it. It's like a micro jig with a little pink head and a white curly tail. <sighs> it is so humid, you guys. Oh man, I gotta. Don't you hate that when you have to put put a hole in the jig head, put your line through because the paint covers it. Yeah. Pain in the butt. Probably pretty darn, oh, yeah, pretty darn rusty at this old fishing thing. I swear, I barely got to fish this summer, but I'm back. I have decided to not really come on here and vent about a lot of the stuff that I went through um, over the last five months or so. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking forward, looking up to the light, and keeping on. So we got that. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't catch us some dinner. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a bite. Oh my gosh, second cast and we got dinner. Shoot, that is awesome. Oh man, look at that slab. I say crappy, but you know what? Some people say crappy. You know what I call it? I call it dinner. <laughs> look at that, second cast you guys. Right curly tail, not too shabby. You know, this is a good size crappy. Um, but it's really not that fat, but you know what? I'm so sorry. It's so weird. I have like an attachment to these little fish here in the pond, in this, in this farm pond. I don't know why I've never eaten one, but I'm going to put this guy in the cooler and we're going to see what else we can catch just for a little bit, but shoot, that was easy. <laughs> Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. If you guys noticed, I'm sure you have, but I've gotten kind of used to it. There's this green, green stuff all over the pond and it is actually not algae. Little seeds, like if you were to use a top water um, on here, the seeds would just kind of like disperse. They don't stick to anything. It's not like, oh, that scared me, fish in the cooler. <laughs> uh, it's not like sticky, slimy algae. It's like little seeds. I'll try to show you guys. Oh. Here's some stuck to my hand. Let's see how good this camera is. You guys can see they're like little 
little tiny seeds there. Let's see what else we can catch. Another crappy. He's not quite as big as the other one, so that's good that I kept that one. <laughs> if you guys can see all over him, there's those little seeds I was telling you about with how hot it's been. I almost wonder if it's helping keep the water cooler under there for him. So it's kind of like a shade on the top. I don't know, but looks like it's not hurting him too bad. It is just me eating, so I'm happy with just one crappy. I'm gonna throw this guy back, but lucky kiss for you. Okay guys, I have not filmed up here by the workshop, at the workshop, or really at the farm, or anywhere lately, so <laughs> here I am, um, I'm outside my workshop, this beautiful, beautiful view, it just never gets old, silence, it's amazing, so I thought what better spot to come up here and uh, cook up this crappy, I'm actually going to be using my little kitchen inside the workshop um, to cook it but I'm gonna do the cleaning out here I've got my little cutting board and uh, I'm gonna scale him and fillet him fry him up and eat him oh, oh my shoot he's still alive oh this is awful I don't like that this, this is awful um I'm going to crack open a drink and uh, return to this in a moment. Let's say a prayer, shall we? Thank you so much, dear Lord Jesus, for this beautiful, most abundant harvest. I am so grateful and thankful for not only the experience and joy that it brought me, but also the nourishment that it's going to bring to my body. Thank you so much for this plentiful harvest and let this beautiful fish cross over into your heaven rainbow bridge immediately peacefully and live in harmony amen while we're kind of waiting on nature to <laughs> take its course that is the brutality of nature. Like, I'm a outdoors girl, um, but I truly love animals. I love nature, and I'm so grateful for any harvest or any just experience, experiencing nature and what it has to offer. So, it's never easy. That's never the easy part, but, um, you know, that's the cycle of life. So, in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys just the beauty here and maybe a little recap of what's inside the workshop. So check this out. I'm in the process of staining the deck, so don't mind the unfinished job, but it's absolutely gorgeous. What better place on earth than to prepare a fresh catch right there? Oh, I'm so grateful, so thankful. Super rustic. I've got some tools out. <laughs> super rustic 
just how I wanted it though. I got I think you guys have seen most of this before, but it's so pretty with the it's so pretty with the light shining through. Um anyways, this right here is going to be what we are cooking our fish on. It's just a single little burner there. And um I've got a cast iron. I'll put it on there and cook him up in. It's it's not the most luxurious uh, thing ever inside there, but you know what? <laughs> this is the type of stuff that I love to do up here, and uh, yeah, I love it, especially when this is red outside. <laughs> you just can't beat it. Let's check on our friend. Yeah, pretty crappy day for Mr. Crappy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get this pan all hot and oiled up. I just got the cutest little um, fish hook ring. It's like a fish hook with a fish tail on it. It's so cute. This might be kind of yummy to add a little sesame oil vibe just a little bit I really only have a few seasonings up here so I'm thinking some pepper and some garlic salt keeping it simple oh I also have oh look I don't know if you guys can see from here but let's see how good this Samsung zoom is one, two, three, four, five doughs. It's good to see. Hunting season is right around the corner, folks. I did bring some lemon thyme herb from my little herb garden. And I think that'll be super tasty on the fish since I don't have fresh lemon. Delish. All right, let's get this thing scaled and filleted. Okay, not the biggest fillet, but it's pretty good. Alright you guys, I got my little burner right here. I am just going to throw these babies straight in there, skin side down first. Ooh, I'm shriveling up. Put some pepper. A little bit of garlic salt. And stuff that's humid up here. And then a lemon time. Ow! Okay, it's too hot.
This is about as fresh as fish gets, you guys. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Mmm, smells good. All right, you guys, for the taste test, crappy, crappie is one of the most delicious white flaky fish. Wow. There is a bee that is getting on my last nerve right now. That is absolutely delicious. I'll tell you what, guys, I may have to try this again. Um, wow. Mm. It feels so good to be back on uh, YouTube and filming again, um, sharing my adventures with you guys. Mm. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to be thankful. For the highs, for the wonderful things that God gives you in life. I know things can get really hard sometimes. I know um, it can feel really low. But just keep looking up. Keep looking up. Keep looking to the light. I'll see you guys in the next one. Yum! Mm. Okay, bye. I was walking out one evening late, the moon was rising high, headed for the river's side, around us fuss and fly. Patrol man, he walked by, asked me where I'm going, said if the sun set on me there I'd never make it home. Said, don't go downtown tonight. There's trouble on the rise. The Batman in the shadows and the bound to take you life. If you mind a ramble, I'll tell you how I do. Keep your money in your pocket and then the razor. Silent through the creek, hounds to lose my sin. I went up a tree and I watched them turn, wondering where I went. I take a rest, I hold my breath, I let it simmer down. I climb too high in my wandering eye, despite the lights of town. I said, Don't go. There's trouble on the rise. The Batman in the shadows, or the bound to take your life. But if you find a ram.
animal still I tell you how to do Keep your money in your pocket, boy 